Are you looking for a Bluetooth low energy solution for your next project? Well, today we're going to interview Nimit from SymmetryElectronics.com. He's one of their Bluetooth low energy experts and he's a technical marketing engineer there. Nimit, welcome to the video. Hey, Josh. Thank you. When we're looking for a Bluetooth low energy solution and we want to go to Symmetry Electronics, what chip should we buy for Nordic Semiconductor? So uh, I would suggest the customers to buy the 32 KB RAM option and the 256 KB flash option from Nordic, which is their most latest revision. If the customer needs to support the new specifications introduced by the BT 4.2. Great. So which of the Bluetooth 4.2 features are currently supported? Okay, so Nordic at the moment supports most of the features as mentioned in the 4.2 specifications. Let me tell you what it does not support. It does not support the longer package sizes, which the crypto block doesn't support at the moment. So uh, that's the only thing, but uh, you know, Nordic in, in, in the coming future is going to come up with a new hardware solution, which is going to support that as well. So, so Bluetooth 4.2 has a lot of features. Is Nordic going to release a firmware that supports all those features? Yes, so Nordic uh, in summer 2015, which is in a few months, uh, it's somewhere going to be around the month of May, June. Nordic is coming up with a whole new hardware solution, which goes by the name of NRF52 series. And it's going to support a whole lot of new features, a whole lot of new applications, and it will have a more advanced hardware and a software. There is no, uh, if, you, if you need any more information, please get in touch with Symmetry, but that is all we have at the moment from Nordic. That's great. So how might we be able to calculate power consumption for these products? Sure. So, uh, yeah, a lot of customers recently inquired about the power consumption of the 5.1 series chip solution from Nordic, and yes, so there is an internal power calculator spreadsheet which is available with the Nordic FAEs, and that basically does this that it's going to help you calculate the power for the NRF51 series in the BLE mode. And how it does that is that it uses some important BLE parameters like the advertising interval, the advertising payload, the BLE connection interval, <clears throat> the packet payload size, and a lot of other parameters that they take into consideration to come up with this spreadsheet, which will give you a very good estimate of the power consumption. Now, this is solely available with the Nordic FA, so please get in touch with us and we can directly get Nordic support through that. Or actually Nordic also supports their customer to come up with their own customized spreadsheet and they can calculate the power consumption themselves. Okay, great. Can you tell us a little bit about the different stack options that might be available to the customer? Okay, so in, in, uh, in total, there are total five stack options. Let's start off with uh, BLE mode, S110, S120, and S130 are solely for BLE. S110 is a peripheral BLE stack. S120 is a central BLE stack. S130 is a peripheral and central BLE stack. So S210 is supports master and slave and and plus stack and the fifth stack the s310 is the most important one because it is it supports master and slave and and plus stack and also peripheral ble stack and these are all free to download from the nordic website okay great so a lot of our customers are interested in what kit options might be available for this i understand there's two kit options can you nimit tell us what they are and how they're different okay so that's a good question so at the moment nordic have uh, two kit options one of them is nrf dk nrf 51 dk kit and the second is nrf dongle both these kits have been recently released by nordic and they utilize the latest chip revision let me show you the advantages of the of one of these kits over the other this kit that you see is actually the nrf 51 dk kit and i have another kit from nordic which is basically an nrf 51 dongle okay so the nrf 51 dk kit is a little pricey than the dongle for the simple reason that it supports a lot of more features which i will let you know right now now this is an nrf 51 dk kit and if you see there is the black chip that you see is actually a programmer and a debugger from Segar. This comes only on the DK kit, which actually lets you program and debug even external boards. This option would not be available with the DK kit that we have right here. So a lot of customers go for the NRF 5.1 DK kit 
because of this reason. The second biggest advantage with the DK kit is that if you if you see this closely, it has Arduino headers on this, which will actually let you further enhance your functionality, which is not available on the dongle kit. The third most important reason uh, is that the DK kit actually has a coin cell battery facility at its back and the dongle because of its size constraint does not which obviously means that you can run the DK kit on a coin cell battery without having without having actually powered it through a USB via the laptop but for the dongle you actually need to plug it into a PC there are a couple more features which are there on the DK kit the DK kit has more buttons it has a few more LEDs and GPIOs as compared to the dongle kit as a result of which you can use it for a few more different and an advanced applications the dongle kit doesn't have so many GPIOs buttons and LEDs so that's about it like I said a lot of customers actually prefer the DK kit but then you know at the end again it boils down to what application you have Thanks, Nimit. So what factors should our customers take into consideration when they're looking for a Bluetooth low energy solution like this? Thank you, Josh. That's a very good question. Apart from the price, uh, there are a lot of other characteristics that actually need to be taken into consideration when going for a BLE solution. I have a list of questions which I actually compiled and that should help customers analyze which BLE solution to go for. The first question they should ask is the maturity of the BLE solution in marketplace which means how often do you see the radio and the stack solution in the products in the wearable space market segment or for that matter any market segment this is the first question and it will help you actually choose the right supplier for you the second question which i think customers should ask is proven track record with interoperability with the ecosystem if you cannot find many commercially available products using the same radio and the stack, there is a room for concern. With Nordic, this is not a concern because the Nordic is being used extensively in the wearable market segment as well as a lot of other market segments. So customers should not really have an issue when going for Nordic solution. The third question is, does the product have an ability to do the DFU firmware updates of stacks and application? Nordic actually allows you to do device firmware upgrade over the air, which is a very good application and a solution for customers for the simple reason that you can actually upgrade your stacks because of the new releases that keep coming in year on. And also any bugs that are found in the older stacks or applications can easy be, easily be upgraded by actually doing the device firmware upgrade over the air. A lot of companies these days do not have the facility of over the air DFU. So customers should take that fact into consideration as well. The fourth question I think is very important is the customer should see if the vendor owns their own BLE stack, if they have developed it and ongoing plans to upgrade features. Now, Nordic develops and supports their own socket architecture, physical layer radio, and BTLE stack. As a result of which, if there is any bugs found, if there is any issue, you know, it, it's they are going to just roll out a new stack fix or an application fix or a software fix, and basically that's going to solve all the troubles for the customer. So also, the last thing that I would focus on is that Nordic engineers work on BLE 100% of their time. You know, they deal with the BLE solution only, as a result of which they do not do anything else, but they do this at its best. They are perfect at it. So this is the last factor to be taken into consideration. Okay, Nimin, I have one last question. What antennas should we consider for this type of solution? Okay, so for Nordic uh, BLE solutions, we have a supplier line called Antenova, which makes internal chip antennas. There is a whole range of different antennas of different frequencies. They are specialized in 2.4 gigahertz. And if you see here, these are really small antennas. They range from different frequencies, right from 2.4 gig to cellular bands to GPS bands. So uh, any customer looking in for an internal antenna solution for Nordic products, they can easily find it available with Antenova, which is one of our supplier lines. And for more questions, you can please contact us. These are, these are how the products look. You know, these are really small and they are very efficient. Thank you, Nimit, for your time on the video today. Those of you that are watching this video, you can click the links below the video or in our blog posts to learn more about how Symmetry Electronics carries these products and how you can contact us so that we can help you with the right solution. And that's what we're here to do, is to help you save time 
and build the best product or the best project. I'm Josh with SymmetryElectronics.com. You can learn more by clicking the link below or subscribing to this video. We look forward to talking with you in the near future, especially with Nordic Semiconductor products in the Bluetooth 4.2 and Bluetooth low energy space. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day.